Hello, I'm Barnaby of Made in Office, and in this fourth installment of the Empower Best Practice series, I want to talk about sharing content in Empower Slides and Docs. How do I distribute content? Why would I want to? And how do I use these white types effectively? Let's get right to it. So in this first part, I want to focus on the Empower Libraries. Uh, what I explain here is applicable in a similar manner to both Empower Slides and Docs. Both have a user and a company library, depending on the setup used in your company, with the exception that Empower Docs also provides a separate library for text elements. This is where every user is able to save their own individual content. This could be a presentation they are working on, a number of documents they have created, or text elements that they may want to keep close at hand. What we want to do first is create a folder by clicking Add New Folder. We can now add a, a user to this folder by clicking on the cog symbol. Uh, we then click Add and enter the name. What we need to do now is set what kind of permissions this user is to receive. For this we have four options. The folder administrator may add or delete folders or subfolders, assign permissions to other users and create, update, read and delete content. This rights type is on par with the folder owner, so it should not be distributed freely if you need to keep an eye on what happens in this folder's content. An editor is able to read all content of a folder and update and delete and create content, while an author is permitted to add and read content within the folder. However, he is only able to eat uh, edit and delete items he created himself, uh, while only use, i.e. read, material of other users. A reader may use material of a folder, however is unable to make any changes. Take note that Empower provides all users with read permissions by default, and this option is only available and necessary when not all readers or uh, users are to be provided with read permissions. To alter the standard setting, you will need to contact your IT department. You can change the role of an existing user by manipulating the options and the rights type. You don't actually need to uh, know all the rights types classifications by heart because we can always hover over the question mark symbol uh, to a review what influence each respective rights type has on the folder. Again, to add a new user to the list, you simply enter the name. And from the result, uh, search results, we select uh, the user we need, select the rights type we want, and confirm by clicking OK. To, to deny an existing user uh, the, the access rights, we simply select the user and click Remove. You also have the ability to notify all users that you have just added them to the folder. To do so, simply click Yes, and once you have confirmed uh, the selection of users you want to add to the folder, and an email will pop up which will already be addressed to the users in the list, uh, and including a link to the folder that takes the user directly there. It is not only possible to add individual users to a folder, you can also add groups of users. You can do so simply by entering the domain name or the user account name, and then clicking OK. We've already added this group. You can also display uh, all the individual users within these groups by uh, clicking on this button.
There's one important thing to remember. Permissions you supply over a folder are automatically applied to its subfolders. These permissions cannot be reverted without denying permissions to the whole folder. Should you want to just provide permissions to a single subfolder, you will have to do so by selecting the folder separately. Now that we have colleagues sharing a folder, we can start collaborating. For example, we want to uh, work together on this presentation. Empower Slides provides us with a number of useful tools to do so. The checkout function in the library allows you to display to other users that you are working on a document. This way, you avoid discrepancies caused by other users working on the same document. To check out a slide in the library, simply select it and click on Check Out. Once you have done so, uh, a label will appear which will denote the slide as being checked out. If the user hovers over the slide, it will also be displayed which uh, of uh, the users actually has checked out this slide. Now, if you were to open this slide in PowerPoint, you can make changes as you would normally. Afterward, upload it back to the library. A dialog will open, inquiring whether the slide is to be checked in or not. If you do not wish to make any further changes to the slide, click Yes. The slide will then be saved to the library and will be automatically checked back in. You can also check in elements directly in the library. To do so, right click it and click on check in. Elements that have been checked out by another user can still be opened and used in PowerPoint. This slide, for example, has been checked out and via insert, I would still be able to uh, insert the slide into the currently open presentation uh, to make my changes. However, if I wish to make the changes and then save them back to the library, I will receive a notification that this slide has been checked out by another user. If I then click on Ignore Checkout and Save Anyway, the slide will be saved to the library, including the changes, but will still remain checked out. The user who had previously checked out the slide will then receive a notification when saving the element that in the meantime changes have been made. He can then decide uh, to accept these changes or not. The label function allows you to assign a label to any element in the library for which you at least have writing rights. The label will then be displayed directly on the element in library view. This function can aid working on presentations with multiple users. For example, you can work with several colleagues on a presentation and you can mark every slide with who is responsible for uh, working on it. To do so, set the desired slide or slides and after right click, click on Add Label. You can then enter a new label or by clicking on this drop down select from the already existing labels. After clicking add label, the label will then appear on the slides. Gone are the days of virtual post-it notes because now you can read the notes at a glance right in the library. You're completely free at what you set at the label and you can also set labels such as update data, discuss wording, or draft. This information is then made clearly visible to all users. To change a label or remove it, you can either click Edit Label or Delete Label, and the label will be removed. You can also set an individual expiry date for every element within the Empower Library as long as you have been provided with evidential rights. If such an expiry date has been assigned to an element, it will automatically be moved to the recycle bin once it has expired. Should you use time-sensitive content, you can set an expiry date to an element so that no one accidentally uses irrelevant or outdated content. To set an expiry date, simply select the element, 
right click it and click on expiry date. In the calendar, you can then set the appropriate date and click OK. This date will then also appear in the elements metadata. To remove it, simply select the element again, click on expiry date and set the option to no expiry date. Finally, I want to move over to the library in Empower Docs. Here too it is possible to share your folders with colleagues, though the current version does not yet provide identical tools such as those for the creation of collaborative presentations, Empower Docs can already be used as an effective tool to share content and to use the number of varied items for quick and efficient creation of beautiful and, most importantly, consistent documents. In this example, we want to create a template of an offer. Uh, another user has already provided me with uh, the required document. And uh, our task now is to provide the content uh, for this offer. We do so via text elements. And simply select all and add the text to the library. The purpose of this presentation, I've already prepared a few text elements. And we simply add, add the final one. Once I'm done, I'm now able to create the offer. We can access another user's template folder to download the template. And now we want to insert all text elements from the text element library. First I'm here change my location. And also drag the text elements to it into a different order. And we can add all text elements by selecting select all. I just want to Add two for the purpose of this presentation. The second text element actually contains an Excel object. The source code, uh, the source um, file is located on a network drive, accessible to all users who are working on this project. You can then make some changes which the embedded Excel will reflect. And we can add the final text element. And we are done. Almost. Now we are done. Okay, I hope I was able to provide you with a better understanding of how the sharing of content works using the libraries of our Empower projects. Additional information on further features of our projects can be found in our help center at support.madeinoffice.com. Thanks for tuning in today's episode of the Empower Best Practice series. Should you have any questions concerning the topics presented today, please don't hesitate to send us a mail to empower at maidenoffice.com. Goodbye and have a nice day.